Hey guys, today I am talking about heating your greenhouse, whether small or large, with a simple device such as this. So it's going to be a multi-step process, but I'm going to show you how to make one of these. And literally, you can heat your greenhouse for pennies a day, probably 10 to 25 cents a day. And depending on the size of your greenhouse, you can make two or three of these and keep your greenhouse above the freezing temperature. So I'm going to show you every step and I'll get started right now. Now the first thing you're going to need is a container and you can use something as large as this down to a five gallon bucket but the larger your container the better because this device is not going to run 24 hours a day you want it to run for a certain number of hours and allow we're going to fill this with water and we're going to allow that water to slowly cool and then we're going to have our heating device on a timer so that it heats up and keeps the water at a little bit warmer temperature and it slowly releases that heat throughout the greenhouse so what we're creating is a just a very large heat sink now the next step, I'm creating a shelf at the top of our container that we can put our heater into and I'm going to put it right in the center. We can drill a hole in the center of this with either a hole saw, I believe this is three quarter, or we can use a three quarter paddle bit and just put it right in the middle, put our heater in through there and that way it won't sink all the way down. The top of this contains a thermometer so we can adjust it to extreme heat or down to its lowest setting. So that way we can adjust it and we don't have to worry about putting our hand into the water unplugging it each time and worrying about sh electric shock. So that way we can just have it right here at the top and we can adjust it a lot easier. Okay, I measured about the halfway point on our shelf here. So I'm gonna drill that. We'll put our hole in it and we'll test it and make sure that our heater won't fall through. Okay, I switched back and forth between my hole saw and my paddle bit. So I just wanted to make sure that it was just the right width. And I'm gonna get a few of these splinters off the back. And we're going to run it through and make sure that our heater will fit all the way through very easily. But as you can see, the top will not allow it to fall through. So it's protected. I might open it up just a little bit more because the, the minimum depth right here is right here. And that's not quite down in the water. So I'm going to widen this out a little bit at the top to make sure that it's at the recommended minimum depth to our heater to make sure that it doesn't overheat. I've got a little bit of a shelf inside of our hole there to make sure that our water heat doesn't fall through. I'm just going to do a little test to make sure that it stops at the right point. And let's see if that, that is right there at the minim, minimum water level point. And so we'll just have to remember that we need to keep our tub filled almost to the top because the shelf is sitting on top of it. So our water will be very close to the top. We'll periodically check it. I'm going to show you another way how to add a lot of these in tandem, a lot of these tubs in tandem in a way to make it heat more than one, which will really, really add to the benefits of using these throughout your greenhouse in different spots. All right, I'm going to put the uh, large water container in just kind of an out of the way place and I'm going to refill it and then we'll set up our system. And I'm going to show you a secondary heater that I purchased that you can use that works even better in a device that will cut it on and off to make sure that it's not running 24 hours a day that cuts the price even lower than pennies a day, it will be nearly free. Not completely free, but it will be nearly free by using this device. All right, we're gonna set up our shelf, run it across, and we're gonna put our heater, and I'll put a link in the description to the all the products I'm using in this video. And so we're going to run that through there and get it as close to the very tight fit. And this is a thermostat on the top that we can adjust the heat. So depending on what our temperature in the greenhouse is, we can run it as high as we want to. And then that way we know that this is slowly releasing heat, even in the coldest nights. And during the daytime when the greenhouse doesn't need heat, obviously we're going to have it set to shut off and I'll show you that divide that uh, timer that I use it's really a great timer it's it's not digital I don't trust digital timers because of power outages and different issues with them so I always go with more analog timers I'll give you a quick glimpse of that as well now this is the timer I like to use in the greenhouse currently I've got it set up running my milk house heater but I use a variety of different types of heater to experiment to see which I think is best obviously if I'm needing a lot of heat I'm going to use electricity but if the temperatures are not quite as bitter as they can be in the dead of winter. 
I'll use something like a device like I'm showing you how to put together or even a flame powered heater in the greenhouse. But this is more of an analog style. There's a lot of digital styles. I just like these because it, for me, I've used these for almost 20 years and they've never failed me. Eventually they do get old and they can wear out, but it's very rare that one of these fails compared to the digital type. So I'll put a link to one of these as well in the description. Now, another thing you can do if you have bitterly cold winters or if you have an extra large greenhouse is you can use something like this, a very low wattage pump and put in a copper fitting a, a, an adapter that would allow you to put in a copper fitting and run it to three or four different containers like this. And as this heats up, you can transfer that water from device to device and then run it back around. So the water never, never leaves this. It just runs through this pipe, runs back around and empties back into the container that way. This container stays full and your second, third and fourth container will stay full as well. But as the copper pipe goes down into coils into each water, it releases a little bit of heat into that. And so you'll have three or four of these working in tandem with only one pump and one heater working rather than having to have three or four different pumps. Now we're going to cut our heater on and I've got this testing device right here that'll let her know what our water temperature is. We'll give it about an hour, maybe to two hours and see how long it takes to heat this water up. And I'll come back and give you an exact measurement of what the temperature is of this particular container. Okay, so I've got this submersible thermostat down in the water here, and our current water temperature is about 55 degrees. And so we're gonna cut our heater on and give it some time to heat up, and then we'll see how well it works. So after waiting about 45 minutes, we were still stuck at 55.8 and I was trying to figure out why isn't it heating properly and then it occurred to me maybe the thermometer was set at a certain temperature or it needed to be reset so I did that changed out the batteries and you can see it's moving around now but I want to show you what it's at we started at 55.6 I believe it was so let me see if you can see this I'm going to try to make it I know it's a little bit of a glare in here we're at 78 degrees 80 degrees. According to this one, we're at 87. So the closer you get to the top of the water, the temperature is a little bit higher. Let's see, at the very closer to the heater, it's the same thing as well. We're getting close to 90 degrees. So as you can see, it is heating. The water feels lukewarm now. And of course, it's got a heat from the, the heat is rising to the top of our container. So just remember, it's going to take anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour and a half, depending on the size container. If you go up something to the size of a trash can, it's probably going to take maybe two to three hours. Then you want to set your timer to cut off for a couple of hours, maybe three hours on, three hours off in a large container. In a container this size, you could probably do one hour on and three hours off, so you're not running it all the time. And that really brings down the cost of your heating down to mere pennies a day, maybe less than a quarter a day, 25 cents a day. So that's what we're talking about. And I'm going to show you another type of heater that's 10 times as powerful as this small aquarium heater. I'll link everything in the description below, as I said earlier. All right, so we're at 97.2, slowly rising. I think the setting on this was about 98 on the small heater. So it's going to probably max out 98, 99 degrees. And let's see what we can see on our soil temperature meter. That's showing 73. Hopefully that's in the... On a glare off of that 78, 80, 84. And of course, as you get lower into the water, the temperature is probably going to be a little bit lower at the bottom. It has a chance. That's why putting in a pump and adding two or three of these would be great because you could circulate the water and it would give you a more even distribution of the heat. So that's, that's what we're talking about, about this small 150 watt heater that you can put on a timer, one hour on, three hours off. And I'm going to show you a larger heater that's 10 times as strong as this small aquarium heater. Now the aquarium heater is, like I said, 150 watts. And this particular model is 1500 watts. So you'd obviously not want to run this 24 hours a day. You'd want maybe one hour on and three or four, maybe five hours off. And so it'd be running about three or four hours a day, heating a very large container. Now this one, like I said, 1500 watts, but these will go up to 3000 watts. So it would put out quite a bit of heat. You could use something like an oversized trash can which would really collect a lot of heat, run it for a couple of hours, heat up the trash can, and then maybe cut it off for the rest of the night. I'm going to do this one in this five gallon bucket. I'm going to try to do a proper time lapse on this one. As obviously there was something wrong with the thermometer on the first one, but I'm going to put this one in here, put the camera up close and let you see how long it takes to heat this water up. It's about 60, 
63, 64 degrees, and I'll show you up close how long it takes to heat the water once I plug it in. Obviously, you don't want to put your hand in this water while it's plugged in, so use common sense safety precautions and make sure you always unplug it before you put your hand in the water. And when you do remove it, be careful. Don't touch the metal because it can be really hot. So just use common sense when you're using these type of devices. So guys, I spent a lot of time taking photographs and I'm hoping I didn't cut the end of my time lapse off, but we ended up at about 130 degrees. This dropped back down since I cut it off, it's dropped down a couple of degrees, but it ended up being 130 degrees and it was still getting hotter. And the water, if you've ever been in a hot tub, 104 to 106 is unbearable. So 130 degrees will heat a greenhouse. It will slowly cool off in a matter of hours, but you just need to run it for that short amount of time and then allow the heat to dissipate throughout the greenhouse. You could also use something like a, I mentioned a large trash can and on top of that trash can, you can put a piece of pl thin piece of plastic and use it as a seed heating tray. So that actually doubles not only as a heater for your greenhouse, will also help your seedlings. So anyways, guys, I hope that helped you and I hope you will try it in your greenhouse, whether you have a tiny hoop house or a large greenhouse like this one. Have a great day.